Hello everyone, welcome to Java Charter. I would like to thank you all for taking out time to watch this video. Myself is Kailas. I have over 11 years of experience in IT and software industry. I have created this video to share my interview experience with JP Morgan. Uh, so this is a part one of the video series. I appeared for JP Morgan video interview few days back. This requirement was for Mumbai location. I had noted down the questions post interview and this is the first part of the interview series. Please feel free to comment in case of any concerns. So to start with the question ball, the interviewer first asked me, let's say I have a strings like following string s1 equal to uh, some value string s2 equal to some value and string s3 equal to new string and the same value So his question was how many memory allocations will be there for this alignment and code? So answer of this question is the object reference for s1 and s2 point to the same object in the memory So only one object is created for that Now when third line executes using a new operator it will create a new object in the heap since new operator creates the object in the heap. So at the end of line 3, there will be total 2 objects in the memory. So this is the answer as per my understanding. You guys can have also your point for the same. Java memory allocation generally divides into two categories. One is heap and one is tech. Heap space is used to uh, use for uh, mainly for dynamic memory allocation of Java objects and the JRE classes at runtime. And the stake memory in Java is used for static memory allocation and the execution of a thread. Now here is one very important point uh, you guys should know. That is, from Java 8 onwards, there are some changes in the Java memory model. So PumGen removed completely and it is replaced with the meta space. Class and metadata now move to the meta space and uh, also uh, we have to uh, note that the code cache is also introduced so it stores the compiled code by JIT compiler and the compressed class space is also introduced so these are some uh, important points uh, which you should know now the second question was what are the benefits of creating an abstract class so I have noted down the answer here. So when there is a requirement where on any child of an abstract class must implement all abstract methods, then you should use abstract class. The second uh, important point is when creating a class jar or you can say uh, you know uh, one um, project which can be widely distributed or reused, then we should use an abstract class because it simplifies versioning. An abstract class is a perfect choice if you are bringing into an account the inheritance concept as it provides the common base class implementation to the derived classes. When you go with the updating the base class, all of the inheriting classes would be automatically updated with the change. So you don't have to uh, make the changes in all the subclasses. So if you want a new version of the in interface then you must create a new interface so this is the advantage over interface uh, the last line okay so these are uh, i think according to me the main uh, points uh, or benefits for creating an abstract class the third question uh, the interviewer asked me if i have a list of string how will i remove the duplicates from it can you write down the logic so basically he was interested um, uh, in the Java 8 code. So as we know, we can do it using the stream API. So let's say if I have a, a list with some values, uh, it's Java, Spring Boot, Kafka and Spring Boot. So here you can see the list has a duplicates called Spring Boot. So what we can do is we can uh, uh, use the stream okay, in the list to get the sequential stream. And then we can use the distinct function Okay, which is an intermediate operation to get the unique elements and the finally uh, the terminal operation using dot collect collectors dot to list using this uh, we can remove the duplicates in Java. Okay, the fourth question uh, which interviewer asked was so it was based on the question three if you are going to remove the duplicates using set 
let's say and when you add the list to set then what add method returns so basically he was interested the interested in the return type of add so instead we use dot add to add the elements so the answer is the add method inserts a new value in the set and has a return type as a boolean so answer is a boolean now the question 5 what are the differences between the controller annotation and at the rate rest controller annotation so as we know the at the rate controller we can return a view in spring web mvc whereas in case of rest controller we cannot return a view it's a combination of at the rate controller and at the rate response body annotation the key difference is that you do not need to use the response body on each and every handler method once you annotate the class using the rest controller okay but in case of at the rate controller it creates the map of model object and the find a view while rest controller simplifies uh, this and returns object and uh, object data which are directly written into the http response as a json or xml the another question which interviewer asked was how can i tell my rest api method that i need to return a response in which format the answer is media type so one sh one should know that media type specifies the format of data in rest api for example we have text html application json image jpeg etc if you are using jex rs implementation that's a jersey framework then you can use the at the rate consumes and at the rate produce annotations okay for example at the rate produce annotations is used to specify the my media type a resource can produce and send back to the client Similarly, at the rate consumes annotation is used to specify which MIME media types a resource can accept or consumes from the client. Now, if we are using the Spring Boot or Spring uh, MVC, then uh, that is uh, then you can use the produce parameter which specifying the media type. Uh, okay, and at the rate post mapping has a parameter which is named as produce that you can use. So this is the answer of these questions. Now question number seven, uh, if I want to supply a parameter along with the response body, how can I do that? So here basically he asked about the at the rate path variable. So answer is uh, at the rate response body annotation means return a value of method will constitute the body of HTTP response which will be either XML or JSON. In the previous slide we talked about the produce attribute also. Now back to this question, we can provide the parameter like at the rate path variable. This annotation is used to extract values from URI path. For example, here you can see the uh, sample code. So we have passed the at the rate path variable as a parameter for initiate my app method. Now moving to the next question, interviewer asked me what is serialization in Java? So this is a very uh, basic concept and he wanted to make sure that I know about the serialization. The answer is the process of saving state of object is called serialization in Java. Serialization uh, is a process of converting an object into a sequence of byte which can be persisted to a disk or database which can be sent through streams. A Java object is serializable if its class implements java.io.serializable. Okay, so if, if uh, you are using uh, this import in your class, then uh, you are you, uh, also implementing the serialization. This is a, again a very vast concept and uh, I can go like around 20-25 minutes to explain the serialization. But this is the short answer and uh, I hope you guys will explore more. Now moving to next question. Uh, does an abstract class require to have an abstract method inside? Can we declare a class abstract without having an abstract method? The answer is yes, abstract class may or may not include abstract methods. Abstract classes cannot be instantiated but ca they can be subclass. So answer is yes, we can declare an abstract class without abstract method. Now the important point is here you can also uh, talk about the static and default method uh, on interface which was uh, introduced uh, in Java 8. So addition of, default uh, addition of the default methods removes many of the reasons to use abstract classes. So interviewer uh, uh, will be impressed uh, if you mention about this um, also while answering this question. Now moving to question 10. 
how one can pass the path parameter in the UR of REST API. So answer is path parameters are request parameters attached to the URI in the REST API resource. So this is a part of endpoint itself. For example, if we have any endpoint with let's say slash user slash ID. So where ID is a path parameter. And if, if I uh, tell you about the sample code, so you can see in the example below where I am passing uh, uh, the ID, so you can see the ID in the get mapping as well as uh, we are passing that as a path variable. So path variable annotation is used to extract the templated part of the URI which is ID here in this case. Now moving to uh, next question, can you serialize abstract class? If not, why we cannot serialize abstract class? The answer is most abstract class do not implement serializable because this would force a significant uh, task on their implementers and subclasses. So it is a bad design. Serialization is a mechanism of converting the state of an object into the pi stream. The byte array can be class, version and the internal state of object. So the basic answer of this question is it's bad design. Moving to the next question. Interviewer um, uh, just uh, asked me to write a sample code and he said that let's let's say I have a uh, written uh, one in try uh, then I have a catch where I have uh, written two and I have a finally and it has a written three. So he said if if I have this code and if I run this code what will be the output and why. So one should know that uh, how written works with try catch and finally there are some combination uh, which you should try but to answer this question uh, I have run this on my local Eclipse and it prints uh, it it looks like this so if I am uh, if I am uh, you know have uh, this SOP in try okay uh, then I am returning one in try I have a catch where I have written in two and I have finally where I am returning three. So here finally blocks overrides the value written by the try block. Therefore this was this would return a three and the SOP statement of try. Hope you guys uh, find this useful. Uh, stay tuned for the part two. I will soon upload uh, the video. Thank you all.